Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. My name is Travis. Today we're going to be doing a follow-up from yesterday's which was troubleshooting a reef tank with STN or slow tissue necrosis and we're going to talk about kind of my progression through this whole situation on this particular rock structure and if you're not new to the channel you're probably wondering why there's a massive gap of space here. Well, the Poseidon tour has been removed and a good chunk of it has been moved over here. So in this video, I'm going to talk about why that colony has been removed and talk about the uh, progression and kind of how I moved through this process and decided just to try to save what I could uh, because of what, do I, what I woke up to this morning. So uh, right off the bat, there's a lot of bubbles in here. I just finished bubble scrubbing and one of the things I like to do is when I'm done kind of cutting up coral and removing a lot of colonies or just in general shaving and getting stuff over the tank, I will bubble scrubble, bubble scrubble, <laughs> bubble scrub. That's funny, that's gonna be a t-shirt, I know it. Bubble scrubble. Anyway, it's been a long morning already and it's only what, it's just hit 12 o'clock, so yeah. Um, so when when I'm done uh, bubble scrubbing, uh, or at least cut up, cutting up coral, I'll bubble scrub and um, you know get all that stuff out of the water column. It goes up into the overflows and then down to the filter socks and of course, it's too dark, but yeah, maybe you can see it. I gotta change those, because they just filled up from just this process uh, I just uh, went through. So. Yeah, I woke up this morning and noticed that the STN was still creeping up the colony, regardless of removing that huge chunk the other day. And uh, yeah, I had to make a decision. So what I decided to do was kind of look around and see if there was any areas on the coral that I was missing that was being touched. And I got over here, which is gonna be hard to see, I'm trying to do this with, with the opposite hand. Underneath here, there was a whole bunch of barney coral that was just growing through the butthole of that Poseidon tour. And you can see there's a little bit of barney coral left here and there's a bunch of it missing. It was growing up through the Poseidon tour and I couldn't see it. So that's where that initial stress was coming from on top of, you know, of course the poison ivy, uh, this, I don't know what the hell this thing is, the millipora was doing it as, as well as the green slimer were all touching it one way or another. And uh, yeah, it just wasn't going to make it. So because the STN or slow tissue necrosis was actually starting to uh, progress relatively quickly, almost turning into rapid tissue necrosis, I decided I would go ahead and try to save the colony. So what I did is I went in here and pulled it out and then I try, I'm trying something new because I have a buddy who, when he has STN, I talked to him this morning, he puts putty in between the corals that are starting to touch each other to prevent the STN and the stress. So what I decided to do is, because I don't have any putty with me, at least not that I could find, I pulled out this colony and then I cut it on the bandsaw, uh, probably two and a half inches from where it was STNing, and I went ahead and put a whole bunch of super glue on the bottom of it, hoping that that will prevent it from uh, spreading. Now, I don't know, uh, the par right here is a little bit lower than what it's used to, and there's another chunk that I pulled off as well, and uh, we'll see how it uh, it does. Now, these are the frags that I, um, I had from the colony I pulled out the other day, and you can see there's a bunch of gaps missing. That's because a good amount of those frags are not uh, doing so well, and actually some of the, uh, I would say, the particles were kind of moving over to the bird's nest and they are not doing very well. So another thing that I've learned and because we're all learning here is if you have a coral that is STNing or just not doing well and you're starting to get that, that process started, keep them away from other corals because that it seems like it spreads. Um, again, I'll have to dive into the scientific reason why it kind of jumps to other corals, but I did lose a few bird's nests which are a relatively hardy coral, at least the ones that were next to the corals that actually STNed out or the frags that did. So. Yeah, um, I'll have to look a little bit more into it as if maybe it's a disease or some kind of bacteria or something that spreads from one coral to another. But uh, yeah, um, I'll have to do my own research on that. But if you know, feel free to put that stuff in the comment section. But either way, I removed what I could. I super glued it. Hopefully, I'm gonna keep it in here for a few days. Hopefully it will do better. It will survive. My, my fingers are crossed because that's a that's a pretty big chunk of coral that, and it's, it's very popular on the website and I hate to have to remove the whole thing. Um, I do have other colonies of it I'm over in the 40 gallon and of course I have the one that I replaced the fish of hex millipora with here. So, you know, I do have other colonies of it and uh, it still sucks though because it's, it's a, a ton of, it's a ton of coral that's missing and I'm not a, you know, look at the tank. Every single day I'm like, man, that thing's bare as shit. Let's just go ahead and uh, keep removing stuff, Travis. Might as well, we might as well just start this tank over again because, uh, you know, what the heck. But uh, anyway, <laughs> I've come to terms with it. And as I mentioned, I'm learning as well as you guys. Uh, this is my first real, real Acropora tank. Uh, again, five and a half, going on almost six years in the hobby. And I progressed pre pretty quickly. And um, I've shared as much of that information with you guys as I possibly could. And a lot of people have been successful because of it. So I'm learning a lot about coral placement, what can and cannot be next to each other. And this is through trial and error. I learned a lot about not having Montipora, uh, encrusting Montipora growing on, growing on, uh, 
next to Acapora because it just wipes everything out. I mean, the Fish of Hex, uh, Crown of Glory, was just getting melted. Uh, putting certain Milliporas next to maybe torts and stuff like that, not a good idea. And uh, of course, the way corals grow and how they shade. The reason why we redid this whole colony was because how a coral grew. It just got too big and wiped out everything underneath it. So there's a lot of things that we can try to prevent and try to and try to kind of manipulate but this is an ecosystem it's going to do its own damn thing we're going to try to do our best as humans to manipulate it because it is just a, a box of water in our house that we're trying to grow these uh wild animals in and uh but at the end of the day they're going to do whatever the heck they want to do and uh, we kind of have to go along with the ride and that's exactly what's going on over here so yeah so regardless sometimes no matter what you do to try to troubleshoot and to try to prevent stn sometimes it just does its own thing. And um, this isn't the first time this has happened. I mean, there's there's been, I looked through some old videos the other day, and there's been a lot of colonies in this 300 that I've taken out, uh, a ton of them. There's just been a ton of stuff that has been uh, grown and removed and regrown and re, and re removed again. And um, yeah, holy, holy heck of a ride for the last uh, two and a half years. Or, oh, well, has it almost been two and a half years? It's, no, nah, maybe, it's getting close. Uh, yeah, it's been a, a pretty, pretty good ride but uh, this is a great tank for a stepping stone to bigger and better things uh, learning a lot from this system not only learning a lot about a coral selling business um, trying to be successful in that but also learning a lot about uh, the corals things that I never thought about and uh, it's great that this system is here and um, even though it doesn't look the greatest right now it's just part of the process someday it will be beautiful again um, and some of you guys are like what the heck it are it is beautiful but you gotta understand I look at it every day I see flaws Probably just part of my personality anyways. But anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, this giant piece of Hydnophora, I'm going to just show you that too. Uh, this is turning into an update, apparently. I'm going to try to just keep it to three more minutes under 10 and be done. But this guy needs to be fragged up today because he was over here uh, knocking off all sorts of stuff. I mean, he was he's killing this bird's nest, killing this staghorn, killing this bird's nest, killing this bird's nest. Yeah, so he's got to get trimmed up, and i got to get in here and cut a whole bunch of this uh, uh, style of four as well. But, uh, and that's all the WWC that I pulled out and what I have left from cutting up that tank, so quite a bit of WWC. But anyway, uh, I might as well note, there is a whole bunch of coral on sale right now. Everything on the website has been dropped. I might as well kind of plug my own shit while I'm in here. Uh, everything on the website's been reduced in price, and... Um, Stick around for live streams too because I tend to do promo codes during them. Not every single time, but sometimes I do. And last week I did, which was good for about 24 hours. But anyway, that's about it. Uh, lesson learned. Uh, troubleshoot as much as you can to and try to find the source and the issue. And I'm still looking around for sump. I just sent out the water, uh, which actually is going to go out today with coral orders, which I got to get started on soon. Um, I'm sending out some water for an ICP test. It's I'm due for one anyways, but it wouldn't hurt to kind of see what's going on. Looking through the, through the sump again, checked all the chambers, just checking things for anything that might be rusting or any screws or anything like that. I'm really just trying to find what might be causing this, but from my gut tells me, it's just all the corals that were going ham on it. And I have my buddy, Jack, who has the same exact coral that has the same exact problem in his tank. It's always the loser. It's always the one that gets ran over by other corals, regardless of what it is. And torts are usually like that. They're a little bit more sensitive. So lesson learned, don't put a tort next to a millipora or a barney coral so there we go lesson learned on that um just sucks to be able to lose a whole bunch of it in the process i'm not a big fan of that but anyway um there's bubble Dor dory i guess i gotta ramble for another minute uh, she likes to go up grab uh, a bunch of bubbles and or a bunch of air and come down and bring the bubbles to the bottom of the tank and then let them float back up and try to catch them again uh, so i guess there's only so much you can do as a fish regardless if it's 300 gallon tank um yeah so uh, i ended up having a couple frags break off not sure what they were um, exactly, so I lost them. They broke off, and then I replaced them. I put some extra, extra, extra amount of glue on this guy um, because uh, he's not coming off again. I can't afford to lose that one, uh, regardless of what it is. But um, yeah, so there's a bunch of coral skeletons. I got to get in here and get all this stuff out. Got to do my filter sock water change probably tomorrow. Not going to do it today. I just cut a whole bunch of cut to order frags, and on top of removing a bunch of stuff from the tank, so kind of done cutting and kind of done being in this tank today for the exception of uh, shipping some coral and replacing some of that water but that's about it try not to do too much at one time but i got 10 seconds left that's about it for the video i hope you guys enjoyed it any questions let me know and uh i'll see you later all right peace